I've never had my own vegetable garden before. I'd always wanted to have one, but travel and living in the city meant that having a food garden was an impossibility in the past. The previous couple of years living on our sailboat, we'd spent a lot of time reading about organic and nogadig gardening practices, preparing ourselves for when we could one day plant a garden of our own. Now with spring arriving, a tractor to do the heavy work, and the gum trees in our backyard felled, it was time to begin this journey to grow our own food. This has been in black plastic for nearly four months now, so since almost since we moved in. Um, I'm going to take the black plastic away. I've already had a little bit of a look. It's very exciting. Everything has been blocked out from the sun and all of the weeds seem to be dead underneath here. So we're ready to put a layer of cardboard down as another line of defense against weeds. And then we're gonna put um, compost on top, um, cow manure compost on top and plant directly into that. We're gonna try uh, no dig gardening straight into compost. It's very, it's supposed to be very effective. We'll see if it works for us and um, less work so that we won't be doing any tilling here. But I'm really impressed with um, the way that the soil looks underneath this black plastic. It's teeming with worms. Um, it's got good moisture retention. It feels nice and um, yeah, it's not too compacted. So hopefully it all goes to plan. I'm just gonna unroll this black plastic now and start laying out cardboard as our first step before we put compost on top. Oh, wow. It's a big frog. I think he's been trodden on. I might go put him somewhere else. Yeah, are you a recover? He's just he's just bleeding a little. Poor little guy. Alright, we'll go put him somewhere where he can swim. We'd taken delivery of 10 cubic metres of composted cow manure from a feedlot nearby. It wasn't completely broken down and the smell coming off the pile was quite rich. As we were raking out the manure, we realised that it wasn't really broken down enough to be the nice crumbly consistency of compost. It was also too rich in nitrogen to break down on its own in the bed. We weren't comfortable planting directly into this manure and decided that night that we should put some of the compost from the local waste management centre on top of the thinly spread manure to balance out the carbon to nitrogen ratio and to have a better medium to sow seeds and plant seedlings into. The following day we collected some more cardboard from our local hardware store so I could finish covering the bed. We then set up sprinklers and put them on to wet down the bed. When we laid out the manure, we'd also forgotten to leave a space for wood chip paths, so I spent some time marking those out and moving the cow manure off the proposed paths.
Oh, Chunk, you're making an interesting noise. Making an interesting noise. They yes. love it when we, when we start mucking around this stuff. The wood chips we are using are from the branches we chipped when we felled some of the blue gum trees back in May. The chips had broken down somewhat and had already performed really well as paths outside the beds over winter. That'll do it, eh? Oh, pretty good. Tell me, how did your garden grow? Oh, it's not growing yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just watering it. It's so warm today. It's beautiful, isn't I it? I put shorts on. <laughs> First time in a long time. Yeah, our, um, our tans have all faded. Yeah, I'm glad. I directly seeded stuff into the garden about four days ago. We've had like three warm days in a row. So I'm hope hoping that everything's germinating. There's yes. supposed to be rain like for a whole week, um, but I'm just watering for now. I'll probably put the retic on too. Just It's quite dry just from being in the sun for three days. So. Yeah. Um, one of the nice things that um, we found is that these, these reticulation heads are sufficiently lower than the dam that we don't need to run a pump. Um, there's enough head pressure to actually operate these, so Pasky's watering at the moment with the thing to get good coverage, but we can actually just pop those on as well. So. Yeah, I've also just put a little bit of morning fresh like dishwashing soap in here um, because I found that the compost that we got from the tips slightly hydrophobic so the water's just like running off yeah off the soil so i've just added a little bit of um fairy liquid or morning fresh to um to the water what can't it do <laughs> oh that's penetrating pretty well yeah it's good i think one of the tricks of people that have, any people that have gardened in western australia or anywhere in australia actually a lot of our eucalyptus trees they have quite strong waxes and things like that on their leaves and they get in um they coat the individual um, grains of our soil here and make them very resistant to wetting, make them hydrophobic so the water runs off or stays on the top and it doesn't penetrate very far. So a lot of people have done that, they just use some, uh, some type of dish soap or something like that just to break, break down those waxes, uh, things like that on the surface and it helps as a wetting agent and it's cheap. Um, I forgot to mention that I planted at the borders with uh, marigolds and um, this end I planted with herbs, perennial herbs. Oh, just right at the end? Yeah, so um, dill, tarragon, garlic chives, because um, I want them to all go to flower, just to sit there and be water, so we can cut them back, but for them to go to flower. Um, yeah, there's a few other things, sage, borage. Mm. Um, yeah, borage has got nice edible flowers, so. Yeah. We'll look back on this video after spring's progressed a bit because this is like the, the early days of spring so we're, we're getting that excited feel. Yeah, exactly.
In order to let the beds break down for a few weeks, and with the nights and mornings still quite cold, I sowed some seeds into seed blocks under the shelter of the old house to give them a good head start. I'd never used seed blocks before, but they make sense to me since I didn't already have plastic module seed cell trays. It was a little bit of work to make them up, but I enjoyed the process of mixing and wetting the soil and stamping out the blocks into trays. I'm also hoping when I plant the seed blocks into the garden, there will be less chance of transplant shock, as the roots will not get disturbed, as they would if the seedling was being removed from a module tray. I sowed a mixture of salad greens, herbs and beetroot clusters in these seed blocks to plant into the garden we just built, as well as various cucumber, zucchini, tomato and pepper seeds ready to plant into the garden we build for a summer harvest. He's so angry. So we found this little guy out, um, out on the road. So I thought he'd be better off here in the garden. Um, these things, when they're kept as pets, people will actually go out and buy them snails. So um, they will eat snails and slugs with relish. So I figured rather than being on the road, he'd be better off in our garden. So this is um, a bobtail lizard for people that don't live in Australia. These little short lizard is a type of skink. Some people call them shinglebacks as well because of these big broad scales, really heavily armoured because they don't move fast. They're not going to outrun anything. Snails is about, is about it. The other name is blue tongue. Part of their threat display is that blue tongue, <laughs> that really big mouth. So we're delighted to have this uh, a new member to the family. We probably won't see it very often, but if they get around the agapanthus and stay out of our strawberry patch when they grow, we'll be delighted. Pasky, I propose that we name this Mr. Brown. <laughs> because uh, I think it's a mist up just because of the shape of this big boxy head. The, the females have a finer head. So I think this is a male. So we'll call it Mr. Brown in honor of our friend Tim. He's a reptile lover and Mr. Brown just sort of goes well with that. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think it's fitting. Isn't he handsome? Get in the agapanthus and eat all the slugs. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Welcome to, welcome to the Ramshackle Ranch. We <laughs> hope you're happy here. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that mouth is something else, huh? That's his threat display. Yep. See that blue tongue? Mm. And that mouth opens like super wide. Go and eat some snails. Go on. <laughs> We were doing pretty well with um, with clearing out this paddock, those fallen trees and everything else like that. It was pretty chaotic when we started, as you can see. So at the moment, what we've done is the usable timber that we think that we can get some good slabs off, we've, we've set aside. There's some really big ones that we can't tackle and we might see about getting an outside party to do that. Um, and I have stacked some at the top of the paddock where they can cure for another year just in the shade. Um, but there's some, there's some younger logs there that I might just knock a slab off and just see how they go and we'll try curing those um, wet. What we've got here is um, these bits here were the, the, the sections of the trunk where there was lots of branching. So they're not really good for slabbing and they're just absolutely enormous anyway. Um, so I've grabbed those and this one's, I mean, you could, pros you could possibly slab this as well, but we've got so much of that stuff. So what we're doing now is all the bits that um, are not really great for firewood um, because they'd be hard to split, you know, they're the, the crotch of a tree or something like that. We're stacking those rounds vertically in between these, uh, you know, these two containers, I guess you'd call it. Um, we're stacking them end on and then going to fill all the, fill all the gaps with 
mulch and and um, you know like chip stuff all the all the stuff that's laying around here in the paddock making the place look messy so at the moment I've got one layer and we want to fill in all the gaps because we're going to make a, a big sort of bed the Germans called them Hugelkutcher beds but we're going to um it's probably going to be oh you don't pronounce it like that Hugel culture, mate. We're going to um, we're going to make a big bed here, and it's going to it's going to rot down. So the, the the slope is coming down like this. So we've gone with the slope instead of across it. So at the moment, there's a mixture of sawdust and mulch. I'll get this layer, you know, as sort of uniform as I can, and then we'll stick more branches and stuff like that. Hopefully, all this will rot down in time, and it can be spread out. But in the meantime, once I've got it all nice and full. We'll mound this over with more mulch and a bit of um, bit of dirt's going to get in there anyway. We'll top it all off with a bit of cow poo and we'll grow some stuff in here and all let it just right back down into this paddock. So that's, um, we've done pretty well. We've got probably a year's worth of firewood. We've got some nice straight timber that we can um, you know, slab and turn into usable lumber. And what we can't use, we're going to try and return back to the soil as quickly as we possibly can. We'll see it at the end, but it's going to just be a mound. You won't know that there's logs in here. Um, oh, what do you think? Should we leave one side just because it looks attractive? I think it looks nice. Yeah. <laughs> a proper a proper hugel bed you're supposed to have coming up at like 45 degrees up and mounded over the top and then you plant everything on there and as the wood all breaks down it acts like a giant sponge so they're, they're more water efficient gardens. Of course this is in one of our pig paddocks so we're going to need to, whenever we have animals in here, we just need to run a quick electric fence around it to keep them out of it. But anyway, it's a good way to get rid of the waste that there's no other real way of getting rid of apart from burning it. So we'll just we'll just rot it down here and we'll see if we can make a really nice um, bunch of watermelons out of it. Oh yes. What do you think, Cook? So we've got a fair bit of wood chip um, and and some soil to go with it at the moment. So we're I'm just raking that level and also where I can is just get it to go down in between the gaps of the of the stems that we've put in already. What I'll do is I'll go around and I'll get a bit more wood chip, um, but in particular small branches and things like that, little little rounds, put them all in here and we'll just keep building this bed up. What I don't want to do too much of, um, there's lots of there's lots of this blue gum leaf laying around. I don't want to get too much of that in there because there's a lot of eucalyptus oil in these leaves. All the all the oil sacs are on the leaves, not so much in the in the stems themselves. Um, so I don't really want those in the bed. But we've still got plenty of wood chip around here laying around, and lots of lots of actual wood. That would be pretty good. And you can see that when we when we top it off, we've got no shortage of this good stuff to put on there. So uh, that with a very, very fine dusting of cow poo over the top, I think um, this, this should be pretty productive for its life until it completely rots away and then it can be spread out in this paddock. Start spreading. <laughs> Get to work. <laughs> Get to work, Chuck. What do you think? It's a bit different to your garden. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's going to be great. So there's um. A oh. Frog. I don't know. Chicken. Squeaky toy. So there's another layer of logs. Oh, and okay. Another layer of this. It's it's fairly humusy. It's not just it's not just the um, wood chips. Like over here is pretty chip heavy and a bit of sawdust. The reason why I've been doing like a layer of logs and then mulch and then another layer. Just so you don't get pockets that are later on as they rot collapse and you'll get holes all appearing in your bed. Yep. So we want it to stay, you know, like, it, it'll shrink, it'll rot down, but I don't want all sinkholes appearing like we're somewhere in Peru. Yep. <laughs> so so that's, um, that's pretty good. We buried most of the logs there. I still need to bury these ones. So there's another layer. All of those logs are quite long. So I'll just lay those ones vertically, uh, horizontally. horizontally. I'll just, I'll yeah. just lay them down there and then we'll just, Get a nice mound up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Oh, look at that! Oh my goodness! That's what the chickens have been eating. Really? Yeah, yeah, they take those things off. Can I go and film? Should I film it? It's big. Hang on. Whoa! I'm sliding through the, the bed. Oh, that thing's scary. Oh, get away from me! It's big. No, no, they get a lot bigger than that. Mm. But 
that's not to say it's not it a spooky hurt. thing. Should we throw it to the chooks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's gone. As I was bending down to get a close up. I'm going to be planting some potatoes today. It's that time of the year. Uh, we're in the second week of September. And um, I'm going to be planting them in bags. So I've just done some research and looked a bit online. Um, and it looks like it's really easy to grow in bags, really easy to harvest, stops a lot of disease um, that potatoes are susceptible to because you can control the soil that goes in. Um, and also if they want to, something gets disease, you can kind of manage it because it's just in one bag. Um, and yeah, I, I, it just looking online, people are getting really great yield out of um, pots and bags and things like that. So I'm going to be planting a big batch of potatoes. I don't even know what variety they are. I just got given them for free from a farmer and we didn't eat them all and a lot of them sprouted. So I'm going to plant a big batch of those in the cut off IBC. So the other half of the IBC that Troy cut down. Um, to make the really handy stillage for his um, tractor and uh, the thing that he attaches to the back of his carryall to carry things around. So the top of that I'm going to use um, to plant out potatoes. Um, I'll probably um, put the potatoes in and cover them and then maybe halfway through their growing just top it up with some hay from the, from the goat's cage so um, that way yeah, I'm not piling in a whole lot of soil now, but all of the others I'm going to fill right to the top, but I'll show you how I'm going to do it. It's a bit of a trial. I'm basically just following um, instructions from people that I've seen online, Simplify Gardening in particular. So I'm just, yeah, watched a lot of his videos and um, he's figured it out pretty well and um, yeah, his method is pretty effective. So um, hopefully we'll have a big load of potatoes. Perhaps the IBC will be potatoes for livestock, pigs and the chickens. Um, we'll just see how we go. Um, or we, we might eat them all ourselves. So this is my stash of potatoes here. They've been sprouting in the laundry at home. Um, and as you'll see, they've got quite nice shoots on them now. Some of them are going green, so the plant's ready to go. They're ready to go in the ground. These aren't seed potatoes or anything like that from a nursery. These are just potatoes that we really liked eating during winter, so we saved them um, to grow our own. And they've all come from local farmers down here. Um, a lot of them just from roadside stalls near our house. So yeah, we're just going to pop them in um, and see how they go. There's some that I don't know what variety they are and there's some that I do. So I've labelled the ones that I know. But I should have, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bags. So I've got enough for each variety here. And then um, I've got lots of one like very common variety that I'm going to put in the big IBC. I'm going to get started. Basically, I'm just going to fill the IBC and the bags about one third full and then just put a little bit of potato fertilizer in, mix that all around, place my potatoes in, fill them back up um, right to the top with the remainder with compost. So I'm just using compost from that we got from the municipal tip, so from the waste management. Um, I don't know if it's going to work very well. Apparently it's quite nitrogen poor, which I think is good for potatoes. So we'll see how it goes with them. I think the key is just to make sure that they keep that they stay watered. So I will be putting a layer of mulch on top of the bags. I'll probably just use some of the spent hay from inside the goats little enclosure. So yeah, that's what I'll do, but better get planting. There's only a few more hours of the day and I want to get this done and um, have everything watered in and yeah, ready to go. It's exciting.
So there we go, I have all my potatoes planted out. So this is exciting. This is my first time growing potatoes and I actually haven't invested that much money in it. So this part of the IVC was just a byproduct of that um, carryall that Troy made, but he actually got this for free. And then these bags I got at the tip for $10. So normally these bags in the um, gardening stores and things like that, they're rough retail in Australia for anywhere between $15 and $25 each. So I think it was a real score getting all these bags for $10 at the tip, for a donation at the tip. And um, yeah, I'm really stoked. I've only put in like, I guess it, all of this, maybe with the soil and a little bit of the fertilizer, maybe I've put in like $30 to grow these potatoes. Not even, probably 20, actually 20 I'd say. So yeah, we'll see how we go. Oh, and if you're wondering what varieties um, we've got growing here, I've got Mozart, which I think are first or second early, so they'll be the first ones that we harvest. I've got them in these two black plastic bags and in a small bag over there. And they're the ones that I actually layered um, two seed potatoes like at one third intervals because they just grow on one level. Everything else I just put at one third interval um, and because they tend to, from what I understand, they're going to grow up and they're going to create tubers all the way up the bag. So we've got Mozart, we've got Prince of Orange, which is a beautiful potato. I actually haven't found much information on it um, outside of Australia, and I don't know. don't actually know if it's determined or indeterminate. Um, and then we've got random potatoes that we got from Troy's sister that had just, they chitted so nicely and they looked really good. So we planted them in that bag. I don't know what they are. Um, rodeo potatoes, Neptune potatoes, orchestra potatoes, and royal blue. So yeah going to be exciting to see um, what the yield is so have a guess I'm, I'm hoping quite a few kilograms but we'll see we'll see when I harvest them at the end of summer That's this carrot sown. I guess now we just gotta wait. But I think they'll be ready in like two and a half months, which is pretty exciting. So yeah, another thing to look forward to. Thanks so much for watching, liking and subscribing to our channel. And we'll see you next time for more spring adventures on the Ramshackle Ranch.